Hey guys, Mike here. In this video, I'm going to give you a universal strategy that you can apply to any monster in Monster Hunter. So what most people do when they try to fight a monster is that they will look at hit zone values or weak points on the monster and they just try to go for that body part. And I'm here to tell you that's not the most optimal way to fight a monster. Instead, what you should be thinking about is how do I keep this monster toppled on the floor for as long as possible? And in Monster Hunter World Iceborne, there's various ways to do that, but typically it's done by flinching the monster either on the head or the leg. And the number of flinches to that body part to result in a topple is different from monster to monster, but there are some general rules and there are also exceptions as well. To further complicate things in different games like Monster Hunter Rise, the topple rules also change in that game. The main reason why Rise and Sunbreak is so much easier than World and its predecessors is because the monster's topple is triggered off of head topples, whereas a lot of those same monsters in World, it's not the case. So even though people have this gut feeling that Sunbreak is easier than World Iceborne, it's because of that simple fact that you can topple the monster by hitting their head because most people will hit the monster's head, but that's not the case in World. All right, so a really good strategy to employ in Iceborne and World. Ignoring speedrunning for a second, obviously if I'm going to do a speedrun, I'm just going to spreadsheet and script and optimize not only the build, loadout, but also the arena that I'm fighting in. So this is not for speedrunning. This is just for anybody where they can just apply this strategy and they'll have a very smooth and successful hunt. All right, so that the goal is to keep the monster toppled. All right, so how do you do that? Well, it's very simple. You just only hit the part that will topple the monster. If we look at the top here, over here it says 2x head. So what that means is if you flinch the monster's head twice, you will get a topple on that second flinch. Now ignore claggers for a bit. Claggers actually don't affect topples, believe it or not. So you can just kind of ignore claggers. So you can see like Teoshra, if you flinch him twice on the head, that's how you topple Teoshra. What you see a lot in speedruns is that they will topple Teoshra the first time, and they build up as much damage as possible on the head while Teoshra is on the ground so that they can trigger the first flinch while Teoshra is on the ground. And then they're already starting to build up towards that second flinch. So just as Teoshra gets up, they trigger the second flinch and Teoshra just falls back on the ground and they do that over and over and over. And that's the very basic fundamental idea behind speedrunning. All right, so you can see the, uh, the yellow dragons with the, the Teoshra Kulshala skeleton operate on a two head flinch topple rule. And I have Puke Puke here. Uh, you can kind of ignore that. But you can see like Kushala Daora right here is actually on a one head flinch topple rule. So every time you flinch Kushala on the head, Kushala will always topple, which is technically easier than Teostra. Another common place to trigger topples is the front legs. And by the way, I'm actually testing and creating a video on how to topple all of the monsters in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. So you can see I'm actually planning it out right now here in this uh, tier list. So subscribe if you're interested for the full list of all the monsters and how to topple them and how to keep them chain toppled. So monsters with front legs on the ground, like the three flying wyverns, Baryoth, Nargakuga, T-Rex. So if you uh, flinch them twice on the leg, they'll topple. They also have special rules as well. So the first part break or the first flinch that you get on their front legs, they will immediately topple. So you can see that there's exceptions to this rule. And this first part break rule for these three monsters is actually <laughs> beneficial to the hunter because it means you get the first topple even faster. And they have brute wyverns. Brute wyverns typically operate on a two flinch rule for their legs, but each leg is independent. And then you have your basic monsters who have actually a one flinch leg rule. For example, Baroth, Banbaro, and then your early monsters like Great Jagras and great Giros. So for the Brute Wyverns like Baroth and Banbaro, they're actually really easy. If you just keep flinching their legs and you just focus all your damage on their legs, you can just keep them chain toppled to infinity. This also makes their legs perfect targets to tenderize as well. The, the early Fanged Wyverns, Great Jagras, Great Giros, just keeping their front legs and every time you flinch their front legs, they'll topple. So you can see I have all these monsters I still have to work on and I actually already have notes for a lot of these monsters. So like I said, subscribe and you'll get the full down low on how to keep all these monsters on the ground. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching.